study my name's d this is my wife millie so if you like what you see subscribe and hit the notification bell and if you wish to reach out to us you can email us at devoted to ya at gmail.com let's go back to matthew 12. so again verse 22 Then one who was brought to him, who was demon-possessed, blind, and mute, he healed him. This is a taste of the future kingdom that is being given to us by the Messiah himself. Nobody has ever been able to do this kind of stuff until he walked on the planet. And then, yes, uh, Shaul, Paul, was blinded. And then, uh, I think, who was it? Ananias, I think we read. We saw this. Ananias in Acts chapter 9, verse 17, right? Yahuwah used him to restore Shaul's sight, okay? I was reading here. I just looked up. Somebody asked the same question that I was uh, alluding to. Did anyone in the Bible besides Yahushua ever heal the blind? And so they, they answered some questions here. Um, but this is, this is amazing. This is a, this is a, a witness to Yahushua's calling. And, and the New Testament in general. Um, now the Pharisees, oh, so they're asking the question, could this be the son of David? That's why I went to all this is because they're asking the question, could this be the son of David? Because they know that these are attributes that belong to somebody that is greater than David himself, greater than Elijah, greater than Moses, greater than any of the apostles or prophets or I should say any of the prophets, right? They knew they were expecting this. So at least they were asking the question. Verse 24, now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, oh, my, matter of fact, let me go to uh, what D-Rail gave me. You want another, you know another, another, another witness to this, D-Rail sent me this chart and we had discussed this a while ago and he, he loved this, so he recently sent this to us. But here's another witness to Yahusha or God. Let's just make it. Let's just make it real. God, mm -hmm. the Almighty, the Mighty One, the, the Yahuwah, the Creator of the universe. It was prophesied that He would die for us. So here are the names of the tribes that make up the 144,000. Uh, look, look at Revelation chapter seven. And what these names mean. Judah means I will praise Yahuwah. Reuben, he has looked on me. Gad, he has granted good fortune. Asher, happy am I. Naphtali, my wrestling. Manasseh, making me to forget. Simeon, God hears. Levi, joined to me. Issachar, purchased me. Zebulun, dwelling. Joseph, God will add to me. Benjamin, son of his right hand. So all together, I will praise Yahuwah. He has looked on me, granted good fortune. Happy am I, my wrestling, making me to forget. God hears me, join to me, purchase me, dwelling. God will add to me, son of his right hand. Now notice what happens when the meaning of the names are combined in the same order into a paragraph. I will praise Yahuwah, for he has looked on me and granted good fortune. Happy am I because my wrestling, God is making me forget. God hears me and is joined to me. He has purchased me a dwelling. God will add to me the son of his right hand. Now, now go to the top, very top. All right. It starts with Adam. All right, here we go. That's the one you want to read to. Thank you. The names in the Genesis have meanings that when put together from the bloodline from Adam to Noah tells the gospel. So man appointed mortal sorrow, the blessed God shall come down, teaching his death shall bring this uh, despair and comfort. All right, here we go. Put those meanings into a complete sentence and you get this. Man is appointed mortal sorrow, sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down, teaching 
is death shall bring the despairing comfort and rest. That's the one I wanted to see. Yeah. That's the one I wanted to share. And so a lot of people that like knock the New Testament, right? All these so-called Israelites, Torah keepers that they start off believing in the Torah and the New Testament, but then they start dibbling, dabbling, saying that Paul is a false apostle. And the next thing you know, they do away with Paul's letters. And then they start saying, oh, there's inconsistencies with the gospel writings as well. So now they just get rid of the whole New Testament entirely and say, oh, we just believe in the Old Testament. The New Testament's fake. The Messiah never came. That's bogus. That's bogus. That's, that's so bogus in so many ways. Like, there are multiple witnesses to the historical account of Yahusha from Josephus, a Jewish historian who's not even a believer in the Messiah. Yep. Okay? And... The temple was destroyed in 70 AD, shortly after he was resurrected. Like there was so, there's so much witness to the ministry of the Messiah and what he did. You know what I mean? There's even stories of, uh, of the sacrifice, you know, where they had like a, a red scarlet or something like that. And, and, and on the temple, if I'm not mistaken, I'm kind of butchering this, but long story short, the Jews have this tradition where they have a, a scarlet they put, I think it's related to putting it on this animal, a scapegoat or something like that. And if it turns a certain color, like red, then it means God has accepted our the, the, the uh, sacrifice for Israel. But when the temple, when the temple was destroyed or, or sometime, sometime around the time where Yahusha died, it said it, it said in this in this historical i gotta find the source i'm sorry i don't have it off the top of my head but it says that it did not change colors meaning god no longer was accepting their sacrifice and uh this is not coming from a christian historian this is coming from jewish a jewish resource i would love to find that but i don't have it for you i'm just talking off the top of my head if I do find that, I'll tell my wife to add it, add a link uh, yeah. below on this video. But man, there's just so many uh, witnesses of why the, the Old Testament and the New Testament uh, both are, are are meant for each other. Uh, yeah, I mean, the witnesses are in the names from yep. Adam all the way to the tribes. That's huge. So yeah. it, the, my purpose, my purpose of saying all this is to say that it was prophesied that God would come down to the earth. He would come and save us and dwell with us. Yep. Hence, Emmanuel. Emmanuel wasn't just going to be some other deity or some other being that's a son of God. He's more than a son of God. He is God himself who chose to become a son of God because in order for you to do what a son of God was prophesied to do, you have to be a son of God. You have to be part of the creation. That's part of God's plan. He said that he's going to raise a seed, the seed, right? Yep. That Satan would be against, have enmity against the seed of the woman. Which he always has, yep. Yeah. So there was always going to be a human savior or a human, some type of human hero. Well, yep. guess what? God always wanted to be the hero. He always wanted to be the hero. So he's not going to give over his glory and his honor mm -hmm. to a created thing that is not himself. Instead, he will become a, a created thing. He will become part of his own creation so he can save us. And, and somebody said it this way. He, he pretty much went into, uh, I forgot how this guy says this. He, he says it real good. It's almost like going into your own video game that you created to save your video game or something like that. There's been my wife in the background just getting in. Uh, Let me can I share something. Go ahead. Yep. To to prove like your point as well, like also that you were saying the the crowds they knew the scriptures they knew because they obviously must have read it they would have never said that mm -hmm. so they they followed the scriptures as well. Uh, John seven verse forty to forty two says, but many from the crowds who heard his words were saying, this is truly the prophet. Others were saying this. One is the Messiah. Others were saying, can the Messiah come from Galilee? 42, has not the scriptures, so they knew, said the Messiah is coming from the seed, the seed of David and from Bethlehem, the village of David. 
Now from the seed, a lot of the, the Jewish people, they want to believe David himself, I believe they have that, that he's coming, but that doesn't make sense because it says the seed of David in the scriptures. It doesn't say David himself is coming. So I think about that, you know? Yeah, absolutely, man. Listen, it's very simple. And a lot of people try to try to talk their way out of this as well, that, that Yahusha is not from the seed of David, that Joseph didn't, uh, you know, it's, it doesn't matter. It, let's, it doesn't matter. Mary comes from the seed of David. That's why they did her genealogy as well. But either way, it's not impossible for Yahuwah to take the seed of Joseph and put it into Mary. That's not complicated. That's a possibility. But either way, even if that didn't happen, Genesis says that it's the seed of the woman. Yep. So regardless, regardless, it's coming from the woman. Yep. God went into a human woman who comes from the lineage and genealogy of David. So it all works. And David comes from Abraham. It all works. Yeah, and that is why that is why the evil one from Genesis tried to mess with the seed. You know, they had a mixed thing with the women and the angels. He's trying to destroy the seed as much as he can. Yep. And so anybody, anybody calls himself an Israelite, Jewish, I don't care if they're Jewish. You can call me anti-Semitic. I don't get I don't give a crap. But if they are denying the New Testament, denying the Messiah coming in the flesh, they are operating for Satan who hates the seed of the woman that was meant to be our savior and our Messiah. Because he knew so, Messiah was coming. Yep.